Welcome to the Candy Shop Show of the Diamond Network. This is November 16th, and boy, do I have a miracle to tell you folks. So right off the bat, I'm going to open up the candy jar treats and share uh, about a miracle that took place for me, and uh, only because of this miracle am I here and ready to visit with you folks. I want to say that... uh, I was at an unusual place Saturday for me, and I suddenly needed to make a U-turn on, in my vehicle. I was by myself, and uh, I didn't see a vehicle that was in my blind spot until I was just about ready to plow straight into the driver's side of the car, and I was just so shocked, and I couldn't believe it. Of course, I'd been doing my nine minutes of Anastasia meditation that morning, and and I just really appreciate the bird tribe being my guides and and protectors, and and especially my individual guide Raul Tindar, because he just created a miracle instead of of driving into that car which was like three feet in front of me. He just dematerialized me in the car and the whole thing. <laughs> so I I went forward, but I was in a different dimension than the car was that was uh, suddenly appeared. And wow, I just, uh, uh, the next thing I knew, I was, I was sitting parallel with the road and I was going in the direction I ought to be going. And there's the car that I, uh, that I almost hit, uh, it was, I mean, the driver was just so shook up because the driver could see that I was about to plow, plow in, into him, and he was weaving back and forth, and he just couldn't believe how he how he saw that I was going to hit him, and then my car disappeared, and, and he was so shook up. But anyway, he, he went on down the road, and I couldn't believe it, and I was just fine, and oh, I was just so uh, appreciative of 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 my guides and, and protecting me, and 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 I got to my destination, and uh, I, I thought that uh, uh, oh, I couldn't, I just couldn't believe it. And then the next day, I was looking at my car, and the bumper that would have driven into that other car. Uh, was loose and and like falling off, and I thought, wow, uh, wow, wow, wow. So so it, it I must have just just barely touched that car before the, the miracle, and I was dematerialized. So that was a, a a lot of times in my life. I mean, I've been saved and just felt like I, I mean that that there was just a hand pushing and stopping my car, an invisible, gigantic hand. But this was the most miraculous of any that I've ever had, and I am just so glad uh, that we do have protectors, and I want to encourage everyone to keep yourselves prayed up and, 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 and your intentions set for the highest good of all concerned. And that's what we want here on our call tonight as we affirm the law of one. Okay. Candy? Uh, this is yes. Katrina. Can you tell some uh, everybody to mute because there's a loud clicking noise that's coming through the speakers? Okay. Yes. Uh, everybody, please mute yourself, self-mute yourself. Uh, and uh, so uh, um, we've, I, I talked about Benjamin Fulford uh, Monday. And, uh, you know, for the, some of the candy jar treats, I mean, it's exciting about, uh, it's, it's so exciting what Benjamin Fulford had to say, uh, this Monday in his report and, and that we can, we can look forward to some really great changes, uh, with, uh, President Trump and, and, um, and, and the changes that are, that are taking place around the world. And, and it's exciting that Russia and China uh, leaders called and talked to, to Mr. Trump, and 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 that uh, they're going to pull together and work together, and and so there'll be 
a financial uh, stability in the global economy, and I think we're all going to benefit uh, materially and 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 in and and every way with this new leadership. And yeah, I don't know if folks caught the news tonight, but uh, uh, the Trump family went out to dinner, and uh, the media wanted to get in their way. And and Trump just uh, they they just uh, they just ditched the media and 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 and, and the media are just so shocked because they 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 always uh, barge in and act like they you know are the, the real kings and princes and uh, Trump's not going to have it that way. So um, if you haven't listened to Benjamin Fulford's ten minute report or read it on his website, uh, I mean I've listened to it three times. It is just so exciting and encouraging. And I think that the uh, uh, two two uh, candidates that he is named to help him is um, uh, are excellent choices. And I'm and I'm glad that he has a 35 year old son in law that he relies on because uh, this man, uh, although was in real estate, he's had a lot of time to study the alternative news and the websites. And really, I am just so impressed. We don't have very many under 40 on our shows except for our wonderful Christopher Stephen Jacobs. Uh, but the young people really know what's going on. Um, they uh, they are so informed so quickly because of the Internet and because of the bad guys uh, getting a conscience and revealing, you know, what they, the roles they played in, you know, assassinating Kennedy and, and all the things that happened. Uh, the young people are... are extremely well informed and I feel better that that, that um President elect Trump has a, a thirty five year old that is um counseling him and thank goodness uh you know they're all the the Trump team it's a close knit family, it's a close knit business associate and they uh they trust each other. They have a history and I think they're gonna work together really well and this is what Benjamin Fulford has been uh, explaining in, in, in more about the backstage. Okay. Well, uh, Candy, uh, you're yeah. going to have to mute the room because there's somebody either typing and talking in the background that's over you. So I don't know who has their phone not, not muted, but there's loud clicking noises and voices in the background. Okay. Uh I have muted the room, and so this means it is one of the moderators that needs to mute their phone, please. Uh, you know, we're hearing some clicking, uh, and I, I know that sometimes these noises are caused by uh, the, the dark forces that don't want us to have a, a great call, but... Um, Everybody should cooperate. Yeah, the clicking stopped, Candy. But yeah. I still hear voices. Somebody's talking in the background. Okay. Uh, let's uh, please, uh, moderators, mute, mute your calls. Okay. Well, uh, that's <clears throat> about what I had uh, for the candy jar treats. You, you know, folks, I'm going to be having, personally, I'm going to be having cataract surgery on Monday. And uh, so I I don't know if I'll be able to uh, share the treats like I usually do on the Diamond Network. But Christopher Stephen Jacobs will be the guest speaker on Elizabeth's show Monday night. And then I will be on Wednesday, the night before uh, Thanksgiving. But it will be a short show. Uh but I think an important one. So join us next Wednesday if you can. Plan to have a wonderful Thanksgiving, and I think you might want to take some notes, quiet notes, maybe with pencil and paper tonight, because you might hear some things that you're going to want to share with your friends and family for Thanksgiving. So I'm putting the lid back on the jar, and uh, Katrina, welcome yes. to the Candy Show. Thank you so much, Candy. I appreciate like being to, here. Yes, would you like to uh, give me any feedback to what you heard just now from me? Well, I, I'm going to kind of uh, touch on that. I have a, 
something that came through from Michael for the end of the show about the country coming together and everything. And I and I think uh, it's going to be okay. I I just really think people just have to calm down and realize that it is what it is and try to work together. And if we do that, um, and we and we uh, uh, send out light and uh, encouragement and a protection for everybody that's running this country and uh, and send positive energy, I can't see that we can't move on in this country and make it great again absolutely absolutely well i know you've had some thoughts and some inspiration from uh michael and your guides uh yes for tonight's show so what okay uh well my uh encouragement and my uh excitement came from some uh uh re- channelings that my son christopher jacobs uh had on november 11th and he was out in salem and uh at, and he recorded the channelings, and he sent them to me. And I was kind of, I was listening to him, and I was really impressed by it. And it was kind of based on a uh, new council of one, and the, it, which is the Declaration of Planetary Neutrality Accord, and that came through while he was in Salem, Massachusetts, and also while uh, visiting Cynthia Schlosser in Atlanta, Georgia. And I listened to these two recordings and channelings a couple of times and was in awe of what came through and what has changed by this channeling. And I'm going to briefly touch on these issues because I can't tell it all but uh, and let you know some of the things that came through. And when he was at Salem, an Orion by the name of Max came through and started talking about the time had come for us to be one with each other and to send love and light to all beings. He said he wanted everyone all races from every universe above and below to come together with a joyous attitude with no hatred allowed and all species and galactics coming together to work out their differences and to forgive and forget the past. He wanted us to start anew with representatives from each race throughout the universe and multiverses and to sit down and work things out. This means every living being from everywhere needs to choose a member of their race to represent them. Many beings uh, were there when he was channeling, uh, and some were reluctant, some were on board right away, and some will need further encouragement in order to get a representative from each race. Most everyone was a little or a lot angry towards each other but they were willing to sit at this council and work out their differences. Now, this means everyone, including the dark entities. Each group must sit and forgive and move forward towards unity and peace. There are some races and or beings that will be difficult to forgive, but if we want peace and want to feel protected at all times, you know, forgiveness is the first step in anything. Max, the Ryan said, new laws are being applied to the world and to the universe. And this is a short version of what Chris channeled through Max, the Ryan, while in Salem. I'm sure he's going to have a lot more to say about that at some other time. When he was with Cynthia in Atlanta, and, and he had Helios step forward that brought information through regarding neutrality. Uh, there were beings from uh, many races that were there that night, like Apollo. He came in to referee, and the reptilians, Zeus, the sky people, let's see, Cygnus, and uh, Jesus, and Michael, Gemma, Simeon, Lucifer, yeah. Shiva, Metros, the Pleiadian Collective, Bendigoth, the Vagartha, and all the dark entities were there, too, such as the Nazi faction, and the cabal, and that is just to name a a few that were there. There were many, many more. I'm giving you a short version of all that was said and who partook in this session. Uh, Helios said, the neutrality and this group of representatives will sit at a round table where no one person or race will be in charge. The Creator Council of Elam will now be called the New Council of One. The original 12 Creator Council will now sit at the same table as equals to each other. This council will grow 
and grow and a new symbol will be formed and be known as the God Eye. This emblem will represent this council, this council forevermore. There will be no other factions, only one faction, because we will be one with all things. We were all created as unique beings. We have special gifts that need to be shared among everyone. As these things are being said, everyone was bowing to one another and shaking hands. This took place on November 11th, 2016, and will from this day further be known as Oneness Day. I felt I was listening to this channel of Chris's and Max and Helios that I was in the middle of Camelot, and I was watching the round table with all the knights coming in from everywhere to make land, to one land and create peace that would spread everywhere. This is so much that was, there was so much that was channeled, and I cannot relate everything, but I have someone with me tonight who can tell you more and answer your questions. Chris, are you on the line? Yeah, I'm right here, actually. Hello. Hello. Well, welcome. Welcome, Chris. This is a nice surprise. Mm Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, uh, I I was wondering if you or or your mother uh, had some of this material uh, typed up and and, and if if it could be sent to me and or maybe Elizabeth to put on her blog. I have every, I type everything. I document everything. Perhaps you could send it to my email tomorrow as an attachment. Sure. I sure will. Wonderful. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Well, Chris, do share. Yes. Uh, it, was, it was very interesting uh, when we were at uh, Cynthia's. But first, like my, my mother said, Salem, uh, this is what we discovered, that there was a neutral the neutrality accord in place there and shows past other beings have said that it was a safe zone, which that is essentially true. But uh, it's a different kind of safe zone where all other beings are allowed there. The whole setting that we were at in Salem kind of reminded me of uh, the cantina scene from Star Wars, you know, where everybody's gathered in one place and eating and drinking and laughing together and everything. And this is uh this is very very interesting. You know, there are several beings here tonight. Uh I will try to try to keep it uh get them to keep it as brief as possible because I know my mother will want to come back on with the rest of us. But uh they wanted to bring more through regarding this and uh, and one other topic. There are let me see three beings here that have never been on the show before, but I'm going to see if all three of them want to speak or if they're just kind of standing there. Oh, they're all pointing at the one that's in the in the center here. So uh, the other two are pointing at a, a single representative here. So uh, uh, this this is somebody you're probably going. You're, I know you're going to recognize. Uh, and my mother and I encountered him many many months back. I did a channeling about him many months before that too you all would recognize King Solomon. He's never been channeled before. Uh, he, this, uh, he has a, a bit of a story, a backstory to go with him that actually applies to what has just been said. To add well, welcome. To the story. Welcome, King Solomon. This is great. Go ahead. All right. He, he comes through really strong. So let me uh, see here. I'm going to get a drink first. Um, and I'll just let him take it from this this point here. <clears throat> Let's see, okay, now, oh, well, here he comes. Dear everyone, within earshot of my voice, I am known to you in your histories as the one known as King Solomon though my name is far more complex than that. That is the short, annotated version, but I digress. What I am here to speak of is this. In your pursuit of neutrality, one must also be aware of your surroundings. In this 
pursuit of neutrality. Know that just because the vibration is high and all is joyous and happy does not mean that you do not have to keep your shields up, as some would put it. This is known to all of you as discernment. There are instances still on your world that are in high anxiety. There are instances and situations and areas on your world that are in great dispute. Aliens, as you come to call all of us, are plundering your resources even as you speak and as we speak. There are areas under high dispute because of the minerals and of all resources therein. So, in these particular areas of high dispute, you will feel an unrest. In these areas of unrest, declare that the area is neutral. All this takes is one single human being to know that neutrality is needed in an area. We are not saying do not love or forgive or any of those things. This is most advantageous for you to do at this time. But in this particular instance, neutrality must come first. All species have to be cordial with one another and be willing to sit at the table and talk just like on oneness day and neutrality day. This was a great starting point to where a dialogue was formed. This was something that I, too, was present at. But since I did not hear my name, which I am not the least bit angry about, I will say that I, too, sit at this council of one. What this council of consists of is this. A representative of each group, as dearest Katrina has just stated, though there might seem to be more than one, of each species. This just means they represent a particular group, just like my group, the Anunnaki, are represented by at least five different members of my race. However, they represent different groupings and different factions and different clans. Yes, my species is divided up into clans, as you would classify us as. We all have our own different emblems. Dearest Michael is part of his own clan, as am I part of mine. This does not mean that we are not all one in the emblem you know of as M. This just means that we have chosen different methodologies for approaching an experiment that we thought was in our control once a long time ago. This is something that started, as you know of, as an egg. This egg sprang into being as an idea. That idea came to fruition through creativity, and the creativity sprang your species. We saw you as not just an experiment, but as an art piece, or as a reflection of our own creativity, though we were not always thinking along those terms and those lines. I, myself, fought in the Great War, as you know of as temporal incursions, I fought across the fabric of your space and time to get to the world that you call home. I sat on a throne once a long time ago, overseeing many people and many places and many times. I pervade over what you would perceive to be as a crystal ball of sorts, though it was a piece of technology that allowed me to see many different multiversal time spans at once. I sat and stared at this ball and in wonder at what your race would become. This is what was contributing to my own undoing. I paused a second because it was an emotional period for myself because I became ensnared by the very beings that have been mentioned on this program before. The controllers put me inside of a sphere you know knew as Helg. There I sat as a, as a nanite imposter, sat on my throne, back in the times you know of as biblical times. This is the Solomon you know of in history, the dictator of demons, as it were, that would tell them to build buildings for him and the like. 
This was not even close to being myself. I, myself, sat as a just ruler on a throne that was not over everyone else. I sat equal to my brothers and my sisters, known as humans. I did not sit higher or lower than them. I sat equal to them at every po pose and poise in history. This is something that people do not yet know. The throne that sat higher was not that of any good and benevolent deity. No, the imposter's name was Solastar, the nanite duplicate, or clone as you humans would put it. This is not something that we approved of, but these duplicates were made all through your cosmos as a, as you say, bastardization of our species. This was done by the AI intelligences, as you call them, in order to pit us against us. But in that particular moment in our time, we noticed our darkest mirror portrayed as a green stain across your world. These green duplicates were not ourselves, yet they reminded us of what we could become and what we did become in our ancient past. These were our dark mirrors that then proceeded to harm humanity, our children, though we thought the experiment was ruined when thereafter the great space lizards, as you have come to call the Draco, decided to descend upon humanity, and the Arconian species ravaged your world. We thought it all had ended then. We thought neutrality and love was not possible again. We thought our species was doomed to oblivion again. But this is not what occurred. We thought, did not know how the experiment would end. We still do not know how the experiment would end. We go off what you humans call faith. You see, our species are not angels. We are not gods. We are not demigods. We are equals to yourselves, though we have lived far older than yourselves. We are, are not as timeless as you make us either. Our species does have a finite time limit, as you humans would say. Though our soul lives on, the body does pass on like your own. We are your equals in every way, shape, or form. We have had to see history come and go. We have had to see hell on earth in order to eventually see heaven on earth. This is another part that I wish to touch on in this interim. In your current day and age, there is a belief that all things good will come to those who wait. Yes, this is partially true. Waiting for something to come, though, is not necessarily a truth. You cannot sit and wait for something to happen and then wonder why it does not. This also applies to the heaven on earth concept. This is not something that will happen overnight. Any form of medium that you see out there, be it benevolent or malevolent, of course, is not as it appears. Well, this is something that must be touched on, this form of discernment. This instant gratification that people want, not only from my kind, but from themselves and for themselves, is simply not applicable. This is not a concept that will happen overnight. Heaven on earth must be earned through blood, sweat, and tears as it has in the past. But in your day and age, it must be earned through love, kindness, and compassion. You have already walked through the fire. Now, wade through the cooling waters of love and compassion. So therefore, the fires that were started so many, many millennia ago by all of our peoples can be doused in the waters of love, neutrality, and peace. This is not only what I came to say this night, but this new era of neutrality will give way to a set of laws that will encompass your world. In order for it to be truly neutral, we must let other countries and other people decide for themselves what is best for their own kind. Though we recommend certain ways of doing things, 
such as neutrality laws, which will eventually come into play on your entire world. Things cannot be forced. You cannot force a river to move faster because it is not moving by your own hands. No. You must move as the river moves. You must move with the flow of the water. You cannot yell at the rain and tell it not to fall. You cannot yell at dear Helios for making the surface of your earth hot in some areas and not hot enough in others. No. This is a cycle. There are cycles that must be honored. Our people must honor them. Your people must honor them. These are the waves of things. Now, back to the Oneness Council. I sit in a chair in a mighty round table reminiscent of Arthur's round table, which has been mentioned on this show in the, in the not-too-distant past. This particular round table surpasses that one in only one way. This one does not perceive it to be the way that it actually is. This is not as I wish it, but in this particular instance, this table is surpassed because of the fact that we do not recognize one side over the other. Though fighting for something you believe and fighting against the true darkness is something that is looked up upon by some of my kind, this is not going to happen on a neutral earth. All people will live together, whether you are harmonious or not, is your own choice. This is the new laws that will come to pass. Even your earthly cabal will have to concede sooner or later. This is something that I have foreseen myself while in isolation within the Helg prison. I saw several things in front of my own eyes that our very captors tried to torment us with. These were instances where the earth was decimated This is something I did not believe in the slightest. These were things that they were showing humanity would be prophecy and doom and gloom for many, many millennia. This is not something that I can attest to will happen. All prophecies regarding doom and gloom were either a bad timeline or perpetuated by the controllers or the wardens of the system. This is not something that will happen No bad race will invade your world. We will not allow it. No evil shall ever touch the surface of your world that was not already present to begin with. We will not allow it. There will be no invasions. There will be no mass arrests. There will be no, as you say, dropping the hammer on these individuals. Though in a lot of instances they do deserve it. We do recognize this. However, They are your own kind. They are fellow human beings, though there are alien lineages intermixed and interwoven into them. They are still your brothers, as we are still your brothers. So, we must all sit at the same table and at least be cordial enough to sit and stare across the void at one another. This may not seem like it is a desirable result, but it is a starting place that we can all live with, to agree, to disagree. That is always a good decision, better than violence. This is what I have come to say this night, but two of my brethren standing before me and behind me wish to speak this night before dearest Katrina ends this show with, as you humans say, a bang. Thank you. Okay, let's see. I'm going to see who he has standing behind him here. There's one being I recognize because I met just recently, and the other one I do not recognize at all. And so let me see here. Uh, who wants to Who wants to speak first? Oh, it's the other guy I did not I don't recognize. Okay, he looks to be one of Joyous's people. I will ask him and see if that's the case. Well, thank you, Team Solomon, and and welcome. And mm-hmm. This is this is wonderful, encouraging news. 
And I just want to say hi to everybody and hi to the Galactics. I love you all. Elizabeth Diamond. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Yeah, he's uh, a little, I don't want to say small, but because he's about the size of, um, I'd say somebody who's about five, five. Uh, uh, I mean, short next to, if Joyous were here, he'd be uh, like a midget, but let me see. Um, let's see. Yeah, uh, what does he want to say? Hmm. I'm going to see what his name is first. Is, uh, oh. He sa- he says his name is Lysum. Lysum. And he's of Ligarius. And I'm going to see what he wants to bring through tonight. Oh, he says he's going to be brief, and then he's going to allow his other friend here to talk. <clears throat> Greetings. My name, as I have just stated to this one, is Lysum. I am of the Ligarian culture. One of my best friends is Joyous, the frog, as you know him to be, and my people to be. We, as you know of, are closely related to your amphibians, though we are far more, as you say, evolved in that respect, maybe in sentience. However, what I wish to say on that brief subject is this, in matters of evolution, though we have stated, and other ET races, as you've called us, have stated in the past that your genome is not as far along as some species. This is not necessarily something we wish to instill in your psyche. We do not want you to think that you are less evolved than anyone else, just like it is bad enough to say you are more evolved in other life forms. You are not less evolved than other life forms. Just because your genome has not been instructed or has learned what it needs to learn, very much like yourselves in your current time span, this does not mean you are lesser or greater than any other species out there. Just because your genome has not reached the zenith or the pinnacle that some other species have out there, does not mean you are lesser than them, though some of them would see you as such. We have come here tonight to say you are are sitting at the same table as all of the, as you say, heavy hitters in history sit at this moment. There are humans sitting on the Council of One's table or at their table, both of light factions and dark factions or perceived dark and light factions. These are a fallacy. So... We will just say that there are humans sitting at the same table with the rest of us. This is what you call a miracle in and of itself, to even get these two factions to even sit at the same table facing one another. So therefore, at this point, we will not make them face one another. We will make them sit side by side, next to each other, at the same portion of the giant round table, which has now been completed in this interim, I will pass this conversation over to the final guest from this one tonight. He is of a culture you know of as Sasquatch, or the Anakam people. He is known as All. He will explain what he means by his name. Thank you. Thank you, Lyson, and welcome. Let's see. He said, okay. Greetings. My name may seem peculiar to all of you. My name is All, and I am of the species you know of as Sasquatch, or Bigfoot, as people have called us. Though we do not care for that title, it is stuck on us nonetheless. What I have come to say is this. This one thought it peculiar that my name was All. But in this, I will say this, all in everything means you are one with creation. The reason I chose this name was I was stating that I am creation itself. This is a mantra that all humans should live by. You should say on a daily basis, I am creation itself. This is why I chose all. I speak now not only for my race, but for 
the creator itself, because I am one with creation. I am creation itself. I happen to be of what this one knows as the Elder Council of the Anakim Accord, along with ones known as Kronoff and Telnorskis and many others and many more, who also sit at the table with the Council of One. This is the brief message I wished to bring forward tonight, except for the fact that my people, the Anakim species, the Sasquatch species as you know us to be, will, as you say, step up the volume in future days and allow ourselves our own freedom to make ourselves known to the breath of your kind. We have already begun to do so in small capacities, but just know that in the next, as you say, six months to a year, you will hear more reports of my people stepping up their game in an attempt to make contact with your kind, not in the full-on contact like some people had hoped. But we will leave signs, symbols, gifts, and we will leave other things such as telepathic messages, dreams. Any dream that you get while in the sleep state, as you humans know it to be, of us coming to you from underground and wanting to transmit messages to you in some capacity. This means we have chosen you to not only speak for us, we have chosen you to speak with us on behalf of your own species and our own. This is the message that I wished to bring through this night. Thank you. Candy? Well, this is wonderful. Uh, Candy? I just wanted to ask... uh, 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 all Candy? question and then we have a comment or question I think from Elizabeth um, all uh, I was wondering we, we've been talking about um, the oneness council and that this is a, a special day and will be remembered forever 11-11 uh, uh, November 11th and, and it's interesting that, that there's a movie out called Arrival it's going to come out on 11-11. I don't know if that is a sign for us. Um, I've also heard predictions that there was going to be something called the Holy Cosmon Day. Is c- Can this also be called, uh, this 11-11, the Holy Cosmon Day? Yes, whichever name you wish to attribute to one this day, is indeed what it could be called, or else we would not be able to call it one this day. Whichever name you wish to give it, in whatever vernacular you wish to speak it, in whatever language you wish to speak it, this can be called whatever you wish. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, Elizabeth? Yes, hi. Thanks. I've been listening. Great, awesome stuff, everybody. Uh I just had six hours off, and I went drove 15 miles to the ocean and sunset. I spent four and a half hours there. I didn't want to leave. Oh, my gosh. I didn't want to leave. I felt like a little kid, just like uh, infatuated, amazed, uh, watching the waves come in. <laughs> At one time, I felt like a, a yogi or something. I would take one rock and step on that and balance it on one foot and step on another on the other foot like I was surfing, but I was watching the ocean. It was amazing. But I just, I am happy to hear the comments of the all the galactics tonight. And I'm here to announce that Diamond's Network is actually, what did the, he use those words, Chris? Um, uh, stepping up with our galactizing relationship. And we'll be having this week, at the end of this week, our first, which, me and another had came up created the name called Diamond Galactic Contact Team and uh, I am so honored and humbled and this galactic this Diamond Galactic Contact Team will be going out in the mountains with uh, ones that have been drawn to the Diamonds Network and you heard him on the Monday show Mark and I look forward to uh to talking with the Galactics and Mark and Chris and everybody on the Monday show. So 
it's awesome, awesome, awesome times, you guys. Uh, as you know, the Diamonds Network does this in a humble, loving, galactalizing. My heart, my mission is to just build relationships with our star brothers and sisters, little bit, a little bit at a time, precept upon precept. Which first it was us seeing ships, you know, for many, many years, and ships crashing and hearing intel. And now we've been galactoizing with them, thanks to Chris, to for Stephen Jacobs, and Cynthia on the Diamonds Network, and I'm sure others out there. And now this is just awesome that we're taking the other step, and we'll we have a team, what I like to call boots on the ground, and we'll be reporting back. And uh, any comments that you guys will hopefully I invite all the galactics listening and that have joined the show tonight and that just heard what my voice that would like to come and speak on Monday so we can relationship together on the subject and make it a smooth move into earth and in our galaxy and our universe and uh, any comments. Thank you so much. So look forward to that. Thank you, Elizabeth. Well, Katrina and Chris. Uh, oh, I just uh, want to see if there's any comments from the Galactics of what we Diamonds Network is venturing with our brothers and sisters. Yeah, all is basically saying that is acceptable. That's that's how he's wording it. So he's he's smiling as he's saying it. So uh, he's <laughs> just you. that's just how he's wording it. And Chris, you'll be Monday show, right? Yes. You're scheduled for Monday. Yes. Okay. And Katrina, I love you and. I look forward to having you too on the Monday show. I just thank you, I'm, Elizabeth. I appreciate that. Yes, I'm just getting. It just seems like since I moved to California, everything all at once I'm getting used to, like work, making friends, blah 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 blah. It's really really going fast now, you guys. And fast is okay because it's helping us go with the flow. It's helping us stay in the now, which will bring us to. You're going to find parts of your life that you're going to feel safe. You're going to feel safe that you you will you may not have it in your pocket, but you'll have enough money to get things what you need. Well, let us remember uh, Lyson's uh, suggestion that we uh, uh, say the mantra, I am creation itself, uh, and, and to say that throughout our days and just to... Uh, Make it so, and make it of the light. Well, uh, Chris, what what do you have to to bring now? Actually, I was done for this evening, but I believe my mother has something to bring to finish the show off this evening. Okay. Well, thank you so much for taking your time and all that you do for us, Chris. Thank you, Candy. Yes, Katrina. Okay. Uh, this morning I had Michael and one of my guides come through uh, by the name of Tobias. I'm going to bring him through on a future show. Uh, Tobias has been with me for many years, but he came with Michael, which is very unusual. But I was just sitting here wondering what could I bring to the show, and Michael says, you know what you can bring to the show. Do your energy circle. And I, I used to belong to a group that uh, met every Thursday, and we would create this energy circle. And uh, we would, because we can't he- take the time to heal each person one by one or each country one by one. So we would start doing an energy circle. And But Michael said, you know, uh, bump this up a little bit and really go for it. And he said, Th- this energy circle is for everyone that is listening to the show. It's for anyone that is not listening, for anyone who needs healing, for anyone that is discouraged about what is going on in this world right now, and for anyone that needs to feel love, peace, and energy that is being sent from higher beings to each individual and all beings of the universe. So I'm going to start this. I want well I, I think that this uh, Katrina is a is a wonderful way uh to do some healing. Uh yeah. do you think it would be appropriate so to ask any of our callers if they have a question or comment on the show 
And should we do that before or after the interview? Well, or? when this is the ending, uh, so if anybody has a question, they I would uh, before I start uh, reading Michael's words, uh, they should ask me now. Yes, do a star six, folks, to unmute yourself if you'd like to uh, ask Katrina or to make a, uh, something or, or make a comment. Yes, hi, is this Sunny? Hi, Sunny. Hi, Katrina and Candy. Um, I will say that this hasn't been an easy week for me at all, but I'm, I don't know this is not the time for me to go into that. But, I, I, you know, I've been aware of lots of people that are very, very worried about what's happening right now and with um, a lot of environmentalists especially are very worried that, uh, you know, um, that the Trump administration will... will take away all these protections and just drill for more oil and gas and all of these things. And, mm-hmm. and I'm in touch with these people, and I am one of these people because I care very much about Mother Earth, you know. I do, and, too. Yeah, I know you do. So I, I guess I'd like to um, have that addressed a little bit more. People's, I know I, I, I remember what Chris said about uh, the role of Trump being as a, a rub, to get mm-hmm. people some more awareness, and I, I see this happening already. But there's mm-hmm. still so much distress out there, you know, in okay. a very, very high degree of it. I'm sure you're aware of that. Right. I, I, uh, I, I feel you. Uh, I understand, and I, I, I have been a little bit worried and scared myself. But I watched an interview with President Obama and um, Donald Trump the other day. And when I watched it, I I didn't take my eyes off of Donald Trump the whole time. And he sat there like a little boy that that was very fearful and very scared because I don't think he really thought he was going to win. I really don't. And I think a lot of the stuff he said uh, was just uh, almost a scare tactic, really. I don't believe he's going to do anything to change the environment. I And he can't change uh, any of the laws that have been put through the highest court. Uh, and he also has agreed and come back and said that uh, he agrees with uh, President Obama about Obamacare. You know, we all have mixed mixed feelings about this, but, you know, he's only one person. And he doesn't make all the decisions. That's made by Congress and the House of Representatives and by the people. And uh, I think a lot of those things that were said were said in the heat of the game and heat of the race. And I don't think that a lot of the things he said is going to come to come true. I think well, he's... It- I think he's hearing and a lot of things from uh, a lot of people now that's probably, I would say, scaring the hell out of him. Because once you're in there, you get to know the truth. And the truth is scary and the truth is dangerous. And all these things that he was saying he was going to do and fighting for, he may have to back off of just a little bit and kind of deal with both sides and, and come into balance in order to be make really great change as a president. Right. If he really is for serving all the people, like you said. He has to. He has to change. He has to bring it down a notch, and he has to uh, show compassion, and he has to uh, let everybody know that he's going to fight for all people, not just what he thought he wanted. Because it changes once you're in office. You know, you're only one person. Right. Yeah, it's true. I, and I, I'm thinking that all these people, these mm-hmm. multiple that are out there, they're not going right. to let this happen. You know? No, but no. And that's so. We we know that that uh, like it was on Chris's show uh, a week ago. You, you know, both Trump and Obama are from the Venetian world. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, Valiant Thor is is an entity of light. And uh, we need to, uh, you know, be hopeful and and, and understand that um, that there's there's higher uh, light things here that may, maybe, uh, you know, those that that 
on the lower level that people don't don't get the the, the larger picture. Let's no, they don't see the whole truth. The, uh-huh. the goodness of the larger picture. Right. Well, that's what that's what I'm searching for, and and, and I ha- but I have to it has to be feel very real to me, and and it feels real. You know, I I'm very um, aware of all the emotions that are that are out there amongst people that that I'm in contact with. No. Well, uh, Sunny, maybe you need to go to BenjaminFulford.com and read his report. I've, yes, I, I've seen it. I've seen it. Yeah, I know what okay. he. But it, it still doesn't. Yeah, answer all of that. Everything well, what, for me. What you're saying, Sunny, is you've got to feel it in your core. You got to feel exactly. it in your soul. And, right, uh, right. and until that fear goes away, until you hear the words or something transpires that makes you feel comfortable and safe, uh, you're not going to buy into it. So it, I right. always say to people that, you know, I was kind of up in the air about anybody for the election, and I'm willing to give anybody a chance, but they got to prove it to me, and they got to give me some peace of mind, and they got to let me know that they're on my side as well as everybody else's side. And that's what a president's supposed to do. And, and we just can put out there a prayer, which you'll hear tonight, because Michael brought through something that addresses this, oh. that we got to believe that the light is going to control this, oh. not only this country, but the universe. And right. uh, But I have a feeling that we're going to hear some words real soon that are going to maybe give you some peace and we do not know what happens behind the scenes. That, but we do know that he is not the only one in control. And uh, there are a lot of good people that are behind the scenes. And so, well, I, and, and and ladies, I I don't know. I come from a different background, perhaps, than you. I am a businesswoman. Uh, Mr. Wonderful endorsed him. He is a fine businessman. He has given. Uh, thousands of people jobs. I am just so excited that we we have a a, a business person that are, are is running the business of our of our country and I'm just excited that that those lying, cheating, uh money grabbing uh, media people were not allowed to interfere with him and his business of of getting going on starting the government. And 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 I uh uh you know, I once worked for Hewlett Packard. Mr. Packard and and and, and Mr. Hewlett were just such wonderful people, and they had such a wonderful business. And there are still lots of wonderful business people in the world even today, even though they have passed over. So, yeah. well, do we have a well, comment or question from someone else that's on the line tonight? You just do a star six to come in. Well, thank you for for stepping forward, Sonny, and uh, well, expressing your issue. It's and burning in my heart and soul, and I expressed more of it on my show last night. You know how I was feeling about everything. I understand exactly how you're feeling, Sonny. I really do. I'm I'm in on your side here. Um, I just do want to make and, and one, yes, con- folks. Uh, Sonny is the leader of the Diamond Show. On uh, on Tuesdays, and then we have another Diamond Show tomorrow night, same time, same channel. Uh, go ahead, Katrina. I was just want to say, you know, and I, I'm not going to get into a political argument here or anything. I am a businesswoman. I uh, I was a businesswoman. I I helped run one of the largest corporations in the world, was the Gulf Oil Corporation, and I was I have been a run three businesses, and I worked the last 18 years with the environmental department in the state of Nebraska. And I am a very well aware of business. And uh, we, the one thing that worried me about Donald Trump, you, uh, yeah, okay, so he uh, is a good businessman, but during his business life, he has bankrupt six mm-hmm. times. And all the time when he bankrupt, he lost all those people, most of those people lost their jobs. So in order to be a good financer, you not only have to create the business, have it make money, 
but you also have to keep the business running. So Donald is makes some money, and he does that, but he has slipped six times. In the, and and another thing a lot of people don't know about Donald Trump is he's he has voted liberal and Democrat every time in his life. So to become a Republican at the last moment was a very surprising thing for me. And he is also close friends to Bill Clinton, Hillary Clinton, and oh, they yeah. and the daughters are best friends. So I mean there's a lot more to this that we're not knowing. So I think it was a this race was a little bit of a game and a lot of it uh will be changed for the better and some of it he said I agree with. So I'm just going to give him the benefit of the doubt that he has the best interest of the American people in mind and the other countries. And I'm just going to put out there that this is a positive thing and not think of it as negative any longer. Well, I'm I'm definitely seeing the, the mix of all of that, you know, too. Yeah, and I've heard that he used to be... A, used to vote Democrat and, and every like time his life. Yeah. Every single that, that time. That kind of surprised me, but yeah, that was interesting. So yeah, I, I just wanna I know there's big struggles out there like this the the pipeline and Dakota pipe um standing rock that's going on there with, with all these people and yeah. there of course everybody's worried that he's gonna start up the Keystone, you know, pipeline yeah. again. But I, anyway. well, I think it's, it's time for the energy circle. It, it doesn't okay. sound like anyone else has a comment. Yeah. All right. Well, well, thank you for hearing me out. <laughs> for thank you, while. Sunny, for asking the yeah. question. I appreciate it. It just, it just had to happen, or I wouldn't feel fulfilled at all <laughs> if I hadn't okay. shared. But, but thank you. Feel thank better. You. Yeah. Feel better. Okay. Okay, Candy, uh, um, you know, everything I say, I say in love. I really do. I just say what's on my mind and I say the truth. So I, I hope there was no offense taken. Well, oh, of course not. Okay. And, and, I mean, yeah. you didn't say anything I hadn't heard before, but that's Okay, fine. but, you Everybody know, I mean, know we, need the, we need to put the truth out on the table and we need to look at it and we need to make positive changes in everybody. You know, everybody's got to change more to be more positive and we can't be divided. It just can't be anymore. And I think this is what Michael wants to bring through because he said it was for every each individual, all beings, this energy circle. It's a healing circle. And uh, these are the words, and this is how he wanted me to run it. And so I'm going to ask um, that we just mellow out here and get very balanced. And I want you to please start taking some deep breaths through the nose and out through the mouth. And I want you to see this breath as divine. Inhale the divine breath and exhale the divine breath. Send this divinity towards a circle of energy that is now forming in front of you. This circle is the brightest white that you can imagine of energy that is forming. As the circle widens, I want each of you to step into this circle and feel its energy spin around you clockwise. And let the energy of this circle become part of you. In the white, bright, spinning protection circle of energy, there is some pink for love, some green for healing, and some blue for communication. As this circle is spinning, it is starting to widen. See it not only around you, but also flowing through you. It is now becoming wider in order to circle your home, your neighborhood, your state, your country. As it is circling your country, let us all send love, peace, hope, and healing towards each other and to all the unsettling things that are going on regarding the election and in this world and to let people start coming together and working together to make this country and our relations with all countries 
one with each other. Put this energy towards the people you love, but also to the people that you do not understand or agree with. It is necessary that we come together with acceptance and work out our issues with one another in a peaceful, loving manner and not pick apart each other because of our differences. Now let this circle widen even further, still so bright that it's blinding. See it encompassing all countries, our planet, the land, and the beings beneath us, and our universe, and all universes that are around us and are part of us. Let it heal us all. Let it bring us peace and comfort. Let us sleep peacefully tonight. May we only emit love, peace, and understanding towards something or someone different than ourselves. May each and every one in this circle of light be one with the light and one with each other. And so it is. Michael. That was just beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. It really moved me when he when he said it. Uh I uh wrote word for word down. Uh it um uh, it was just uh something and he was very, very mellow and very peaceful and very articulate because he can sometimes come in uh very uh bold and uh and uh he just was like he wanted to wrap his arms and his wings. Yes, he has wings. And he wanted to wrap them around everybody, around this country, around this universe. He's, he, I felt him weep because he, he wants so much for there to be unity and so much for us all to be one. And he does want to see that heaven on earth that Chris was talking about. And he knows it takes time, but if just one person every every time if one person tonight changed their mind about someone else and or reaches out to somebody and makes peace or forgives their neighbor or a parent it's it's a, a one big step towards this unity it's not it starts right here with us and at home and then it goes to the country and the universe but we each are an important part of this unity and this uh, new council of one, we, we're all members, and uh, we're all going to get our membership, and we need to start tonight. So if there's somebody he wants me to tell you that you haven't talked to for a long time, or somebody that you're holding a grudge against, or somebody that you don't accept what they believe in, call them up, write them a letter, or reach out to them and say, it's okay that you're different, and I'm different. I just want to I just want to reach out and say that I love you. And we need to do that because I don't think there's anybody that doesn't need to do that. I know I do. And um, I just uh, wish everybody that's listening many blessings and that good health and that you make your life whole by bringing close your friends and family and bringing together anybody that you have been separated from and make yourself stronger just through loving people and loving yourself enough to admit that maybe you didn't do everything just right yourself. And uh, that's what basically Michael wants to end with. And that is beautiful and is this a message he shared with you recently or uh, this morning? Oh. This morning. Oh, this morning. Uh, and that's why when I text you, I said, I think I've got something for the show because it was so powerful. It just, it, it just changed me. I don't know. Something came over me and he used this circle on me to show me what it felt like. And it just, uh, I uh, kind of fell apart. And then when he started talking about making peace and forgiveness 
and all that, you know, it touches everybody. And I realize that, you know, we're all, we all need to make some kind of adjustments in our life and some kind of reaching out to people and, and taking care of our neighbors, even if we don't know them. If you see they need something, uh, just be kind. Kindness just is, kindness is the light. The light is kindness. Compassion is kindness. And they are both the light. Anything like that is love. And it just grows by every act, by every kind word, and by every smile we share with people. That circle of energy grows and it brings us together so that we can, we might not always agree, but we can at least agree to disagree and still love one another. And that's what this country and uh, and the people of this country and this universe need to do. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's been so many calls for unity and coming together and 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 they they like this morning they quoted a a, a congressman who said the most horrible things about Trump uh but he 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 wanted to ignore all that and and he wanted to be forgiven for saying those horrible things. And he, and, he, and he didn't want to say anything negative. He said, this is a time for positiveness and hope. And it's time for a honeymoon for our country, our world, to come right. together. And, and that, was a, that was a wonderful thing for the uh, uh, congressman to say this morning. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, we just, uh, oh, I, 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 I was able uh, to show, uh, you, you know, as you spoke, the energy of healing circle tonight. You know, three mm-hmm. three more people popped in my mind that I needed that I realized I still had a grudge with, and and I needed to uh, uh, forgive them. So I, I personally have done some forgiveness this evening, mm-hmm. and I just uh, appreciate that you and Chris have have shared all of this uh, uh, with us, and um, and and I and I hope that when folks go into the Thanksgiving season, that they remember that not only are we supposed to express words of gratitude, express words of thanks, but we're supposed to feel appreciation. Embrace the emotion of appreciation for for the world, the the, the, the fall colors, the exciting weather, the, the friends and, and the families and the foods. Just feel the emotion of appreciation, folks. Total Maybe gratitude. It. Absolutely. Thank you all, folks. It's it's a wrap of the Candy Show. Candy, good luck on Monday. Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm.